Welcome back to another episode of 100% Epic. I'm Chris. Today we're going to be building the Mullet version Tiny Whoop. Stronger, lighter, faster, and way much more cooler. The major modification is to the VTX camera uh, module. This one's the Quantum Elite. And what I do is actually separate the VTX from the camera. The modification takes about 15 minutes and allows you to remote mount the, the VTX portion of the camera module. In this case, I, what I did was just rotate it back and allows the antenna to be protected between the rear nacelles. Gives it that nice low profile so it's not going to get caught up on any gates. And if you crash upside down, it's going to be totally protected by our new uh, mullet cap. Now, I'm also going to show you how to make the mullet cap. That'll take you about an hour from everything that you have uh, available at home, except for some styrene sheets. All you're going to need is a shoebox, access to a 3D printer for the vacuum floor mold, some plastic sheets from your local craft store, and a sewing hoop from the local craft store. And I'll show you how to do this. You additionally need just a hair dryer and a vacuum cleaner, and you will be able to make this four gram epic hood. And I'll put these uh, 3D print files up onto the website. First episode is gonna be the VTX modification so that you can go from this to this. All right, let's get started with this Molent mod. First, you're gonna need a Quantum Elite uh, Microcam VTX. And let's first take a look at this so you understand it. Once you remove the, uh, the cover of the case, which most people do to save the weight anyway, there's always two boards uh, installed. One is the camera module in the front and the back is the VTX module. Now what most people don't realize is the camera by itself is a camera module and it doesn't need any of the circuitry from the uh, VTX module. There's actually three pins on the left hand side and two pins on the right hand side. So if we actually cut and separate these two uh, components, you can use this VTX with your own independent camera as well as uh, use the camera with your own VTX. So either way, it uh, works really well. Now for wiring, I like to use a really thin gauge, really flexible silicone wiring. This wire came uh, with an FC as an extra, you know, go to OSD or UART or something like that. But it's the real thin gauge, um, uh, real flexible silicone wires. And you only want to make this as long as you need it for your particular application. If you're mounting the antenna towards the back of the quad or you're just going to lay it down, make the wires as short as possible, one for uh, RF as well as weight. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need. Now, when we separate these two, um, it's better to clip all of these uh, pins and then individually desolder each one pulling them out versus trying to desolder all of them at the same time and separate these boards. You can uh, put a lot of extra heat into the board that's not necessary and cause a lot of other problems. So if you just clip them and then heat it and pull the pin out, it's a lot easier, a lot safer on your, your equipment as well. And it's fairly easy to do. So if we take a look at the schematic right below, we've got uh, the three wires on this side. We've got our video signal right here, we've got our negative, which is our center, and then our uh, positive, which is our uh, 3.7 volts from our single cell on the, uh, the bottom lead. The two on the right hand side are only there for a mechanical connection uh, for the board. They are connected to ground, but they aren't necessary to make the VTX work. Let's go ahead and get started. Now that I have the uh, camera separated from the VTX module, one thing I wanted to point out that this, uh, this camera module was actually built to fit this VTX module in its size. But if, uh, if you look around, you've got these little micro cameras out there that are even smaller than the original camera that came on the board. And since we're separating the VTX, there's no reason you can't actually use one of these. Let's take a look at the, uh, the size comparison of this particular one. 8.6 uh, uh, millimeters. versus 14 by 20 and that one's pretty much squared also if you were to uh, cut this uh, back and put on the silicone uh, wiring it probably uh, weigh a lot less just as a uh, comparison of weight that's two grams of your 4.7 on the camera and that's 1.5, and, and remember we've got wires on that, if I put the wires on that, yeah, 1.8. And so if you were to uh, make shorter wires, you'd probably get it down to uh, 1.5, 1.4. And save yourself a, a little bit of weight uh, off of this camera. As well as, let's take a look at the size. Most of these cameras are mounted up top on our little uh, inductrixes, um, uh, because they really don't fit anywhere else. You know, you, you got to really shove them way forward on these, which causes... Uh, instability problems, but let's take a look at this mini camera right here. Fits in right there, 
nice and tidy. So I will save that build for another day. And I do that. Let's just get this one soldered up and uh, working, and uh, we'll uh, then make the uh, mullet hood for it. All right, as you guys can see, the uh, the camera and the VTX has been separated, just the three wires, and as you can see on the screen, definitely is still working uh, just fine. And now this allows remote installation, and more importantly, it allows us to flip this down, keep it nice and tidy, and that antenna out of uh, getting uh, snagged on any air gates and out of danger. Okay, I finished the modification. Right here we have our mullet version with it nice and laid down towards the back. And here is a standard whoop. So if I rotate them to the side, you can see how tall the uh, the standard is compared to the uh, to the uh, mullet version. So the problem is with the standard whoop is the antenna and a crash always gets ripped off, uh, damaged, bent, as well as the PDB right in here cracks. In the mullet version, where it's laid down and hanging out the back, it is at the same height of the camera itself. So in a crash, it's going to be able to lay flat. Also, it has a torsional uh, twist right here, so it's going to flex instead of uh, damage the lobes as well. Now, the other thing I did to further protect the camera was uh, 3D print up a, a quick little uh, mold and then vacuum form using a real thin piece of styrene that goes right over the camera and goes to the standard attach points of the original uh, turtle deck. And then we have a real nice cover. And if we turn it to the side, you can see that is slightly higher than the highest part of the lobe on the rear camera, uh, on the leaves, on the circuit polaroid. So in a crash, it's just gonna slide right onto the, uh, the roof. Plus it adds quite a bit to the little cool factor. Now, uh, for making this, I've showed you in this episode how to do this modification, and it's applicable to any um, micro quad. You can just lengthen these leads and put a front mount camera and then a rear mount uh, VTX on anything like say a 110 millimeter Wisp or an H-frame or something like that. So it's a cool mod. Plus I also pointed out that you can use even smaller cameras if you wanted to get even a smaller, lighter, full high performance build for a whoop. For the next episode, I'm gonna be showing you uh, how to take a 3D print and vacuum forming it with the uh, basic tools that you have around the house. A hair dryer, a vacuum cleaner, a sewing hoop, and some styrene sheets. You can get the hoop and the styrene sheets at your local crafting stores and uh, and I'll just walk you through how to do this. This turned out to be uh, 0.4 uh, grams. It is actually lighter than the original. Super thin, super light, um, plus styrene takes paint as well as markers like there's uh, no no tomorrow. So you can paint that up and make it, uh, make it your own. Plus like I said the cool factor is just awesome. So stay tuned, subscribe, get ready for the next episode for the ultimate mullet whoop.